would get your Bibles, it would be my privilege to share with you what thus saith the Lord. I love you too. Thank you so much. I sense such a presence of God in this place. you to turn to the book of Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14 take me down in the monitors a little bit Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14 and also Genesis chapter 42 verse number 30 through 38 again Hebrews chapter 5 verse number 14 and the book of Genesis chapter 42 verse 30 through 38 Our theme this year for the conference is God is working it out. I don't know what you need God to do. I don't know where you are or what you're going through. But I do believe that God is working it out. If you'll just let him, if you'll just trust him, God is working it out. Look at somebody and say, God is working it out. Throughout this weekend, many men and uh, men of God are going to share with you from different perspectives how to let God work it out in your life. It's my job to open up the conference tonight. I'll be your speaker tonight and tomorrow night. You've got some very fine speakers that are going to be speaking this weekend. And I just believe that there's a reason that God ordered your steps to be here. You didn't just wander in. God ordered your steps to be here in this place. And I, I just pray that our time together would be profitable. Amen? We're going to consider two scriptures. It's my custom to stand for the reading of God's word. You don't have to stand for me, but for God's word, if you would. Um, once we've read these scriptures, if you don't want to stand anymore, that's purely up to you. It's just a custom throughout the Old Testament scriptures when the word of God was read, they stood out of respect. We live in a culture that we stand when dignitaries come, we stand when officials come, and then we sit when the word of God comes. But it, it seems like that God is due. It's just my cuff to my little silly way. It seems like, it, seems like he's, he's worthy. So I started doing that. Many, many years ago, I've been preaching the gospel for 27 years. And I've seen God do some marvelous things. I started preaching the gospel when I was 19 years old. And a lot of things have happened in 27 years. But I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging bread. I have never seen a man sink so slow, so low that God couldn't raise him up or get so far out that God's love wouldn't bring him back in again. Donnie McClurkin just said it like all of us wish we could. Our God is preachers. He's an awesome God. 
and forgive me if I don't go through the roll call and name each and every one of you. I so respect you and I appreciate you. I'm so honored that you're you're here tonight. And 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 my remission of calling your name personally is is not an ineptitude of my appreciation, but it's just I am so pregnant with this word tonight. you just uh, pray for me I, I have such a sense of destiny I'm not trying to build a career or make a name or prove a point I'm, I'm way past that now I want to be right in the center of God's will for my life it is my desire that I might impart some spiritual thing to you that that you could go back home with that would that would be profitable to you I'm not, I'm not trying to win an award or impress you or, or get you to make up your mind about me. This is not about me. But I know that there are men who are watching us in prison chapels all around the country. I know that there are men watching on monitors on death row from, from jail cells. I know that there are men in distant shores who are stuck out in Iraq somewhere that are, that are watching us right now, that are picking us up over the airways on the God channels and places that we will never go before. And I know that there are men in this room who came to this conference and said, Lord, I need a word from you. I need a real word from you. I, don't, I didn't come to impress anybody. I didn't come to be seen. I came because I need a word from God. And you're dealing with some tough stuff right now. And you're going through some real challenges. And God has been so talking to me about you that it's been difficult for me to even get sleep. Some of you have been going through some places where, where if, if, if it weren't for the grace of God, you would have been totally sifted and destroyed. And you don't even understand what in the world is going on in my life at this particular junction. But God is working out some things in your life. And before it's over, God's going to get some glory out of things that you've been suffering through. Do you hear what I'm saying? God is going to get some glory out of your life. I just I want to tell you that. <laughs> Turn to the book of Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14 and when you have it say amen. amen. And I want you to just follow along as I read this word and then we're going to go to Genesis 42 verse 30 through 38. It says, but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses, have their senses exercise to discern both good and evil. Again, but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. I want to read that again. I think that there's a whole lot in that passage. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. This is not for the babies. This is for people who've been through something. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised exercised to discern both good and evil can you say amen? amen now quickly let's look at the first book of the bible book of genesis chapter number 42 verse number 30 through 38 again the book of genesis chapter number 42 verse number 30 through 38 and yes i'm talking to you in the prison i want you to follow along to get your bible and get in the word of god and i want you to take some notes and i want the lord to speak to you because god loves you and god cares about you and god's going to speak to you about some situations in your life genesis 42 verse 30 through 38 when you have it say amen, amen. The man who is the Lord of the land spake roughly to us and took us for spies of the country. These are the sons of Jacob telling Jacob what has happened to them. And they're speaking of their encounter with Joseph, though they don't call him by name. And we said unto him, we are true men. We are no spies. We are not spies. We be twelve brethren, sons of our father. One is not. And the youngest is this day with our father in the land of Canaan.
And the man, the Lord of the country, said unto us, Hereby shall I know that ye are true men. Leave one of your brethren here with me, and take food for the famine of your households, and be gone. And bring your youngest brother unto me. Then shall I know that ye are not spies, but that ye are true men. So will I deliver you your brother, and ye shall traffic in the land. And it came to pass that as they emptied their sacks, that behold, every man's bundle of money was in his sack. And when both they and their father saw the bundles of money, they were afraid. And Jacob their father said unto them, Me have ye bereaved of my children. Joseph is not, and Simeon is not, and ye will take away Benjamin away. All these things are against me. And Reuben spake unto his father, saying, Slay my two sons, if I bring him not to thee. Deliver him into my hand, and I will bring him to thee again. And he said, My son shall not go down with you, for his brother is dead, and he is left alone. If mischief befall him by the way in the which ye go, then ye shall bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to the grave. Look at verse 36. And I want to explain it because I want to be sure that you understand it. And it says, And Jacob their father said unto them, See, see Jacob is terrified because he feels like he's losing everything. He's reached a point in his life where he is really worried. He's already lost one of his sons. Another of his sons didn't come back with the brethren. His son is being held in Egypt. And now they're asking for the only son that he has left. And he's not the only son that he has left, but they're asking for one of his favorite sons. And he feels like he's already lost two. And his heart is overwhelmed. And Jacob their father said unto them, Me have ye bereaved of my children. Joseph is not. And Simeon is not. And, 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 and now you're going to take Benjam, Benjamin away? All these things are against me. All these things are against me. All these things are against me. All these things. Have you, have you, have you ever got some news? that just so overwhelmed you that it just you just said I just can't take anything else Jacob said all these things are against me my, my focus is really on those two words against me all these things are against me and my subject tonight is resistance training resistance training and I want to talk to men who feel like the things in life are not always working for you but they feel like sometimes they're working against you are there any men in here who have ever felt like life was just working against you before you could get through with one thing here comes something else now I'm not talking to your church face I'm not talking to who you pretend to be I'm not talking to how you act like you are but I'm talking about those times when you're awake at two o'clock in the morning and you say Lord if one more thing happens to me I just don't know All these things are against me. Joseph is not. Simeon is not. And now you seek to take Benjamin away from me. All these things are against me. And I declare unto you that everything that seems like it's negative in your life is simply resistance training. And when I finish preaching today, some of the things that broke your heart and hurt you the most are going to be the very things you thank God for. 
because I want to tell you tonight that God is going to get glory out of the obstacles and the opposition in your life like you have never seen before. And the greater the struggle and the greater the opposition and the greater the test, the greater the reward is going to be in your life if you faint not. Touch three men and say, whatever you do, don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. You're in too deep. You've gone too far. You've dealt with too much. Don't quit. Let's pray while we're standing. Father, I thank you for the rich opportunity that you've afforded me to preach the gospel. I understand that the flower fades and the grass withers, but the word of the Lord shall stand forever. I pray, Lord, that a supernatural anointing would be in this place, that you would infuse us with divine revelation and anointing, that we might be endowed with that kind of influence of the Holy Ghost that causes yokes and bondages to be broken. I pray for that man behind prison walls who feels like he has nobody to talk to and that nobody cares. Tonight we link up with him through the Holy Spirit and I pray that the grace of God would touch him wherever he is. I pray for that person around the world that's watching us right now and saying I have never seen anything like this before. They're in a stadium. It looks like a game but it's not a football game. They're excited but nobody scored a touchdown. I pray that they would come to know the power of God and what has caused these men to leap and shout is more than a ball it's more than a game but it is the power of God supernaturally touch somebody who's hungry for a blessing today I pray this prayer unashamedly in the name of Jesus and let the believers shout amen you may be seated in the presence of God Jacob, the Bible begins to talk to us about Jacob and those of us who are familiar with Jacob know that this is well over into the life of Jacob. Jacob is not a rookie, he's not an upstart, he's not just getting started, he's lived a while, he's walked with God a while, he's been through a lot of changes and a lot of stages in his life, and if you're not familiar with the life of Jacob, if you just picked up at this particular moment, Jacob doesn't look particularly faithful right now. He doesn't seem like he's full of faith and conviction. In, in fact, he looks like he's full of fear and frustration. And the problem with people who judge you by one period of your life, they really don't understand the totality of who you are. It's like someone who comes in in the middle of a movie and they evaluate the whole movie based on one scene. But if you're going to understand who Jacob is, you have to look at the totality of his experience and then evaluate who he is without just evaluating him at this particular moment. Somebody would say, Jacob, you should just believe God. Why are you afraid? Why are you upset? Why are you frustrated? You should just know that God is going to work things out. But you see, Jacob has come to a point in his life of testing. And what tests one person is not the same thing that tests another. When God really wants to equip you, you go through tests that other people wouldn't be able to stand. For to him whom much is given, much is required. You have to be careful of praying, Lord, make me like so-and-so. I want the same kind of success you gave so-and-so. Put me on the same platform that you gave so-and-so. Give me the same companion that you gave so-and-so. Give me the same kind of marriage that you gave someone else. Because you don't know what that other person had to go through to get where they are. It's, it's not a popular teaching, but it's true. There is a price to be paid for every level of life. There's certain things that you have to go through in order to prove fit and to be meat for the master's use. There is more cost associated with, say, ministry than, than being able to pay your tuition to the university. The university can give you a degree, but a degree by itself will not prepare you for the opposition and the spiritual warfare that you will confront in in the process of doing what God has called you to do. There are challenges in life. There are many things that God has to take you through to bring you to a point that you have become
become fully convinced that the God that you serve is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that ye may ask or think and quite honestly when you get ready to go through these tests people around you often cannot help you for in reality many times they don't even know that you're going through what you're going through because real training and real tests is a private opportunity for you to exercise in the presence of God and thank God it is private if you've ever seen people working out they make some ugly faces they make some terrible noises it's hard to really look good while you're working out because it's trying you in places of your limitations and struggles it's easy to look good in here and you come in here and you drove down here and you came down on your church van and you came in on your church bus and you just got off the plane and you and the brothers are hanging out and it's praise the Lord brother God bless you and everybody's singing the songs of the Lord and it's a wonderful time but, but, but this, this really isn't the training ground that I'm talking about the real training ground is not when you're surrounded by masses of Christians who are supporting you and saying come on with it go ahead you got it I'm praying no the real challenge is when you're left by yourself the real challenge comes not when you feel like going through it but when you're at the end of your rope and you're saying I'm tired of this and I want to give up that's when you really begin to strengthen yourself and you begin to understand that God is with you even when you're not sure that you're with yourself Jacob has been through a whole lot of fights and to those of you that don't don't understand this is a tremendous challenge for him because he is a full age because he's reached a level in his life where he's been through so many challenges that maybe maybe he's a little bit tired now maybe he's been hit in some places where he really hurt and you know something you can survive a blow an attack a battle an injury but still not be at the peak that you used to be because you suffered some things to get where you are is there anybody who knows what it's like to survive tests and trials and yes you made it but it costs you something that people don't even understand that it costs you you went through agony in places that people don't even understand that you went through agony and it's a funny thing it's possible for people to be jealous of you at a time that you're so tired you say here you want it you can have it take it I'm wore out I'm sick of you want this here go ahead with it be because they, they see the glory but they don't know the story and, and let me tell you something behind every glory my brother there is a story there is a struggle there is a test and there is a challenge and God designed it that way there are no free trips there are no free rides no, nobody gets wisdom without a price nobody's going to lay hands on you and confer the kind of wisdom and glory that you need I don't care if everybody lays hands on you they put oil all over your head they intercede for you in prayer groups there's still a certain amount of things that you can only learn by an active engaged process in in the event of life and let me tell you something this is the workout of a lifetime I'm talking about living I'm talking about getting up out of the bed every morning and going through a day and dealing with issues and struggles and tests and challenge you have never been worked out like you're going to be worked out in the process of making it through life you can be white you can be black you can be rich you can be poor you can be sh short or fat good-looking ugly it makes no difference educated or illiterate life is a workout and before it's over you're gonna be tried in places that you didn't even know that you could be tried tempted in places that you didn't even know you could be tempted frustrated in ways that you didn't even know you could be frustrated so before you start judging all of these other brothers and getting out your report card about what they ought to do just stop look and listen a minute your life is not over yet and you haven't seen everything that you have to face to get through the next junction tell somebody say but whatever you do don't quit I think that Jacob is particularly interesting because Jacob's whole life has been a series of struggles. His first struggle starts out in the womb. He's fighting before he ever even gets here. He's in the womb fighting, struggling with Esau, trying to, trying to fight his way out. There's a fight in his childhood. Brother McClurkin was talking about some of the early fights in his childhood that he went through. And I believe with all of my heart that when the enemy knows that God is going to use you in a significant way, he, he arranges tests and struggles and fights to, to kind 
kind of discourage you and subvert you from getting to the place that God would have you to be. But in spite of the enemy's early attacks in your life, isn't it amazing how God can take the thing that the enemy used against you and work it for you? I don't know whether you've gotten to this point, but before life is over, you will look back at the things that you've been through and say, you know what? It was good for me that I've been afflicted. For had I not been afflicted, I wouldn't know the Lord like I know him right now. It was good for me that I didn't get the help that I should have got. I'm glad everybody didn't help me and support me. I'm glad that I didn't grow up in an Ozzy and Harriet situation with a dog and a one and a half car garage and a dishwashing machine. I'm glad everything was nice and neat and I had to struggle and press my way up because now that I'm here you don't have to worry about me being arrogant I'm grateful I'm grateful for every day I'm grateful for every moment and I know that if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side I wouldn't be here touch your brother and tell him you're looking at a miracle you're looking at a miracle you're looking at a miracle Maybe I didn't go through the same thing that Billy Blanks talked about. Maybe I wasn't resuscitated and brought back to life again naturally. But spiritually, God has brought me back to life again when it looked like everything was dead and gone and hopeless and I thought I wasn't going to make it. But God was so gracious that he allowed me to make it through. I'm a testimony. Not I'm going to give a testimony. Not I'm going to say a testimony. I am a living testimony. How about you? Jacob's been through tests, he's been through some challenges, he's been through some struggles, he's had some fights, he's had some conflicts with his brothers, he's been misunderstood, he hasn't been perfect, he hasn't been holy, he hasn't always understood God, he had issues, his his mother had issues his family members had issues he wasn't birthed in a divine in, into just a perfect situation but God had a plan for his life and when God has a plan for your life he just brings you through all kinds of things that you thought you couldn't go through because God is going to use you for his glory he has a love life he he sees a woman he says I want to marry this woman he works seven years to get this woman and then gets tricked into another woman mm and he ends up married to the wrong woman. I'm not going to bother that. Let me stay out of that because that's going to start up a whole bunch of, I don't, I don't have enough time to deal with these relationships where he's, he's hooked up with this woman and looking at that woman and wishing he had gotten that uh, and, and everything is crazy. See, some of you don't give your testimony because your testimony is not a nice, neat testimony and church folk couldn't handle what you really think about your life because you've gotten tied up in some strange stuff and I'm over here physically but emotionally I'm over here and you need God to balance your life because your life is taking a wrong turn. Has anybody ever taken a wrong turn? <laughs> mm. And he ends up married to Leah, but he was expecting Rachel. And it takes 14 years of work for him to begin to get his personal life in order. And let me tell you something, you can shine in your public life all you want to, but if your personal life is in a wreck, you will never have any real joy and real peace. I would rather be a star in my house than to be a star in here any time in the world. I'd rather feel good about myself when you're not looking than to feel good when I'm on stage and then hate myself when I go home. And it takes a minute for you to be able to work out all the kinks in your life. It took him 14 years to begin to get his personal life together. Look at somebody and say, but don't quit. Because there's some brothers in the room right now, you feel obligated to act like you have it together. You feel obligated to impress all the brothers you came down on the bus with. But the reality is things aren't reconciled so good at home and they're not coming together so good in your life. And you needed to get away this weekend so you could get your head on straight because you need God to get some glory in your life. Oh, you ain't got to say nothing, but I came to talk to you and I'm not going to leave till I get it done.
Yeah, 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 yeah. So tell somebody and say, but God's going to work it out. Yeah, you got some issues and some situations and some circumstances and sometimes your body's over here and your emotions over here. You're working this job and you wish you had this job. You're in this situation, but you need to be in that situation and you don't really know where you are anymore and only God could put your life back together. You've been to counselors, you've been to therapists, you tried to drink it down, you tried to smoke it up, you tried to shoot it up and if God doesn't hook a brother up in here, you're not going to get a breakthrough. But our God is an awesome God. And he knows how. And he knows how to work out things in your life that you thought you couldn't work out. He finally gets himself together. He finally gets the love of his life. He finally puts everything together. He finally feels like I'm on the right road now and I've got my little family and I've got things going good and the great love of his life that it took him 14 years to get hooked up with dies. And every time Jacob goes through a test, he feels like, I'm losing something. And when you've lost something, and lost something, and lost something, you can still walk out here and act like, oh, that didn't hurt. I'm a man. I'm bad. That don't bother me. But if life keeps punching you and 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 punching you, and punching you after a while, you say, ooh. 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 I don't mean when anybody's looking. When anybody's looking, it's... But when you get by yourself... Oh. wife died. His daughter got raped. His sons brought down conflict in an entire nature, nation with their, with their evil and wicked demeanor and his kids got in trouble. Joseph, his beloved son, thought he was dead. A famine hit the land. The economy went down. Life savings gone. Crops destroyed. Lost house, lost everything. From financial troubles to relational troubles, he'd seen almost every kind of trouble he could see. And when he sent his boys down to Egypt to get some food, to get them by, and they came back and said, we left one of your sons down there, and one of his sons was already dead, he just folded up and said, look, I can't take any more. All these things are against me. Isn't it tough when you're in charge and you don't feel like being anymore? When everybody looks to you for answers and you don't have any more answers to give, when everybody brings their problems to you and you're supposed to be the guy who's always in curry and always got it going on and really the truth of the matter is you're just as discouraged as the people are that you're trying to encourage and you've taken so many blows in so many places that you can't think of anything encouraging to say to anybody. Is there anybody in here who's ever wondered, Lord, I sure do wish somebody would encourage me like I encourage encourage other people when is somebody going to come help me like I help them <sighs> yeah. and he says he says I just can't deal with this he says Joseph is not and Simeon is not and all I got left is Benjamin and now 
now you tell me you want to take Benjamin away and he says all these things are against me and from Jacob's perspective and based on his perception life had turned against him maybe maybe you're in this auditorium and it just seems like everything you touch just goes crazy maybe you're sitting up in that prison and you say how in the world did I get in this situation it it really isn't that hard to start feeling sorry for yourself all you have to do is take enough blows that you say if I'd only met this woman sooner and if I would have only finished that school and if I would have only had a father and if I would have only been raised by my mother and if I would have only finished that course and if I would have only not been in the car and if I and if I and if I and if I and you'll never get out counting up if I's because everybody has a lot of if I's and if you start counting if I's you can say all these things are against me but the Bible said I'm not talking about how you feel I'm not talking about how it looks I'm not talking about how it seems the Bible said that all things the Bible said that all things work together Romans 8 28 it says all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord it didn't say that all things felt good all things seem good it didn't say that all things look good it didn't say that everybody applauded all things but it said that God has a way of taking all things even the things that seem like they're against you God said I'm going to take all things and make them work for the good of them that love the Lord I'm going to take every abuse every misuse every misfortune everything they meant for evil Evil, everything they meant to destroy you and if you just stick it out God said I'm gonna make it work for your good and it'll only happen to you if you don't quit and you stick with me and trust me even when you don't understand what's going on in my life I have not forgotten you I know where you are I saw what you were going through I know what's going on in your house I know what you think you need I heard your prayers I heard you cry I was in the car with you when you were driving down the road with the tears in the corner of your eye and I promise you if you don't quit I'm going to make all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord touch three brothers and say whatever you do don't quit yeah don't quit don't quit you may cry but don't quit you may rest a minute but don't quit you may be weary but don't quit you, you may be exhausted but don't quit you may have to come and get refueled but don't quit you may have to go on a fast but don't quit you may have to go on a new consecration but don't quit because I'm still working it out I'm still working it out I'm still working it out you're not there yet but I am still working it out am I preaching the right message am I talking to the right people touch three people and tell them God's going to get some glory out of this Oh my God, I feel like God's going to do something. I feel like God's going to do something in this place tonight. <laughs> Hebrews 5.14 says, But strong meat is for them that are of full age, who have had their senses exercised by reason of use, that they might know both good and evil. Mm -hmm. Strong meat. This is for people who have been through something. The, the message I'm preaching tonight is not for babies. 
it's, it's for brothers who have been through something, taken some blows and dealt with some hits and stood up to some punches and fought your way back up and said, somehow or other, I'm going to get out of this. This is strong meat tonight. I didn't come with a ham sandwich and a glass of milk. I didn't come to give you some cookies before you go to bed. I want to talk to somebody who's been through hell and high water and you're still holding on by a thread. You feel like giving up, but something down inside of you is telling you to go ahead you said all these things are against me but God keeps telling you I'm gonna get some glory I'm gonna work it out in your life I want to talk to you tonight are you in the house wherever you are whether you're in the prison whether you're in your living room or whether you're in here give God a praise right now Now follow me brothers because I'm going somewhere. Hebrews 5.14 says that these men who are of full age have had their senses exercised by reason of use that they might know both good and evil. Now it's not talking about your natural senses. When Brother Blanks was started talking about your ear gate and your, your eye gate and all those natural senses, we're not talking about your natural senses being exercised by reason of use because your natural senses have gotten too much use. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life is what got you in trouble in the first place. It's falling what seemeth good to you and what felt good to you and what you heard and what you touch and what you taste is what got you in trouble. But you got a whole different set of senses down inside of you that have to be exercised. They're spiritual senses. They're not your natural senses. When the Bible said, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church, it's not telling you not to be deaf naturally. It's it's telling you not to be deaf spiritually that you have to exercise your ability to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church that there is a realm of the Spirit that you have to exercise in or you do not grow and in order to be exercised you have to use this second set of senses now the word exercise in the Greek it's gymnasu, which is where we get the word gymnasium. God has a gym. And you think you're just living. But when you got saved, God put you in his gymnasium. Because God wants to build up your other set of senses and stop you from using your natural senses. So every time you use your natural senses, you keep getting in trouble because God is trying to bring you to a point in your life that you start craving to hear with your spiritual ear and to see a vision that has nothing to do with eyesight and to taste and see that the Lord is good and blessed is the man that trusted in him. God wants to develop another set of senses and so God puts you in his gym and touch a brother and say this is the workout of a lifetime mm. now I understand that there are roughly about 600 muscles in the body about 400 or so that center around areas of use that we control to walk, to move, to touch, to bend, to kneel, to sit, all of that, about 200 or so in areas that we don't control like our eyes and the ability to focus and to move. These are all muscles that operate in our lives. That we have, that these muscles generally about three surround bones protecting those bones and cause them to function and be able to move. And, and there are some brothers, there are some brothers, you know some brothers like, 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 like Billy Blanks, they, they, come, they build, you know. They come in the room, they, you can tell they're in good shape. They've been working out. I'm just, I'm just glad. First of all, I'm just glad manpower is here. I starved to death because I knew I was going to be on the stage with him. 
I'm just glad it's over. I'm eating some chicken tonight and some mashed potatoes and, and I'm going to put some jelly on my bread because it's over now. It's over. A brother going to get him some peach cobbler up in here tonight. Yes, I am. But the reality is he may look like he has more muscles, but he doesn't. The brother who's all buff and strong has no more muscles than the little skinny, scrawny, little weak brother who can't, they don't, they don't have any more muscles. It's just that one brother has developed them more than the other brother because he's gone through the training to build up what God gave him. Now the Bible says that God has dealt to every man, touch your brother say, that's talking about you. <laughs> God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. So he didn't give one brother more faith than he gave another. It's just that one brother has developed his faith more than the other brother. When Jesus said, oh ye of little faith, he didn't say, oh ye of less faith, because they all had the same amount. We have the same muscles, but one of us got our muscles a little, little, little smaller than the other one, but we still have the same amount. One brother has a little bit of faith, and the other brother has built up his faith. That, that's, that's the bad news, but here's the good news. Jesus said, if ye have the faith as a grain of a mustard seed, and if you start exercising it, you could speak to the mountain and say, mountain... So, what God does, he puts you in the gym, and when God puts you in the gym, stuff starts happening in your life. Are there any brothers that a lot of stuff has been going on in your life? A lot of changes, a lot of issues, a lot of struggles, a lot of tests on the job, in the house, in all different areas of your life. You've been going through this, that, and the other, and before you can get through dealing with this, here comes that, and by the time you deal with that, here comes something else. Touch somebody else and say, welcome to God's gym. God's got you in a situation and he's working you out and he's developing you and he's teaching you that the just shall walk by faith and not by sight. He's teaching you to lean not to thine own understanding but trust in the Lord. He's teaching you to acknowledge the Lord in all thy ways and he shall direct thy path. And even though you feel like an underweight in the spirit, when you get through going through this test and having to get in the word because you got nowhere else to go to get the help you need to deal with the pain in your life after a while you're not going to be calling other people to pray for you you're going to be able to pray for yourself one night you're going to get up out of your bed and say you know what devil I've had enough of this I bind your powers tonight turn my daughter loose turn my son loose turn my finances loose brother say you just need a workout brother you just need a workout you may not need anger management you just need a workout you may not need anger management you you may just need a workout you you you, you don't need another wife you just need a workout you don't need to pick up somebody on the side you just need a workout you've already been in five churches you don't need another church you just need a workout touch your brother say you need a workout up in here stop and stop crying, stop feeling sorry for yourself, stop going through depression. You just need a workout. So, now some of you won't get this message because right now you don't have much weight on you. And when you don't have much weight on you, you can lift everything real easy. It ain't no problem. 
Brother handling his business. Got it going on. I don't see why everybody not just praising the Lord. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Why don't they get up and praise the Lord? Why don't they just trust God? Why don't they just, that's because you haven't been through anything yet. Then all of a sudden, you remember when you lost that job? And you had to praise him anyway? It took you a minute, but you got it. You said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to get over this. I'm not going to worry about this. I'll let nothing separate me from the love of God. I'm going on about my business. I don't care what the world says about it. As long as I got Helen and me and Helen are together and my little kids, we had prayer and we just believe in God. Everything's going to be fine. It's no problems. Everything's going to be fine. And then all of a sudden, you and Helen go through tests and now you got more weight. And you say, oh, man, I can handle this. I got it together. She just don't understand who I am. We just need to communicate. We just need to work it out. We just need, everything's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. And, and then the repo man came along and took the car. And you got more weight. A lot more weight. You standing up to it, handling your business. And then your parents got sick. And you're trying to manage your house and their house and mama's grass needs cut and your grass needs cut. And, and your mother-in-law needs you to do stuff you're not able to do. And now you got more weight. You can still lift it. but it's getting a little heavier than it used to be. Are there any brothers in here that life is getting a little heavier than it used to be? All of a sudden, it's not funny anymore. You're managing it, but, it, but it's not funny anymore. And you look around and you got much more weight. And you see, every time you enter in a relationship, get or lose a job, get or lose a house, get or lose a car, get or lose a child, you're taking on more weight. And then all of a sudden, you're being tested in places you've never been tried before. And you feel like, I can do it, but all the stuff I went through before is starting to affect how well I deal with things now. That's what Jacob meant when he said, all these things are against me. He's still there. He's still up under it. But it's getting harder to live. But brother, God said, my strength is made perfect in weakness. He said, let the weak say that I'm strong. He said that all things are possible to him that believes. He said that if you trust me, I'm with you when you pass through the waters and through the flood and through the fire and through the test. And if you just hang on in there, God's gonna get some glory out of this. Touch three brothers and say, you can get it, 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 you can get it. Don't give up, don't give in, don't give out. You can you can handle it, you can handle it, you can handle it, you can handle it, you can handle it. God's got you in the gym, God's got you in the gym, you're brother love. And so you, you start handling your business. Yeah, you're handling it. But it ain't just lifting it up that counts. It's how you handle it when the gravity and the weight is pulling you down. 
it's resistance training. Your muscles are being strengthened by the opposition. And when gravity and weight is saying down, it's how you manage what life places on you that causes your muscles to begin to grow. And then all of a sudden, they put some more on. Touch your brother and say, I got stuff on me that I never had on me before. Tell the brother, say, handle your business, handle your business. And as, as a resistance, as the resistance is applied, your muscle starts stretching. Your muscle begins to grow. And the funny thing about the body is wherever the pain is and wherever the muscle is being challenged, that's where the blood goes. And I want to thank the Lord because when life starts challenging, that's, that's where the blood goes. Tell somebody and say, thank God for the blood. When it got really tough, the, the, blood the blood came. The blood came. The blood came. The blood came. The blood came into my house. The blood came into my marriage. The blood came into the prison. The blood came into my jail cell. The blood came into my dilemma. When the devil thought I was going to give up and slit my wrist, the blood came in there and rescued me and delivered me. And then they put some more weight on some help he was shaking is that why you were standing there just in case Jesus said I will not leave you comfortless he said I will send you another comforter the Holy Ghost is in your life so that when the weight gets too much for you the Holy Ghost is just standing there just in case so that you can help a brother out would have fainted if the Lord hadn't come along and lifted the weight up. Is there any brother in here? I want you to throw your hands up and say, Lord, I need some help right now. I got, I got weight on me like I never had before. I got pressure on me like I never had before. And, and, and if, you don't, if you don't lift it up, I feel like I'm being thrust up under this weight and all these things are See, my problem with most church folk is they act like they never get tired. They act like they never get weak. But David said, I would have fainted had not I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And every time I was about to give up, Lord sent some help to get me out of this. I want you to grab one brother by both hands and tell him you're in trouble right now and you're dealing with a lot of weight. But, but God's going to get some glory out of this. God's going to get some glory out of this. I see God. Tell him I see God lifting weights off of your house, off of your marriage. Tell that brother in the prison, I see God lifting weights up off of you. I see God lifting you up. I see God preparing you. You, you, you just need to let the Lord lift that.
message is that Jacob was wrong anyway. Joseph was not dead. And Simeon was not dead. And Benjamin was not gone. Jacob just thought it was. If you let the enemy trick you, he'll make you give up and tell you that all hope is lost. But if you could just hang in there and trust God, the Lord said, I'll restore everything to you. That the canker worm and the palmer worm and the locust ate up. Touch somebody and say, it's not gone. God's going to bring it back again. God's going to bring it back again. So how? Isaiah said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run. And not be weary. You don't even feel like you're getting anywhere. But just keep on running. Just keep on running. And you say, the more I run, it looks like I'm not making any progress. But if you just keep on running, God is strengthening you. And after a while, by and by, you'll mount up on wings like eagles. You'll run and not be weary. Touch somebody and say, I've been running for Jesus a long time. And I haven't got time yet. runners are running that they run a long time and after they run a long time even the pros get tired but as they're coming in the home stretch they get some I don't know what it is they call it a kick and just when it looks like they can't take anymore if you've been training right just when they think you can't take anymore if you've been training right just when you're at your wit's end you get your kick touch your brother and say neighbor tell the devil he thought i was gonna lose it but i feel my kick
just in the nick of time he strengthens you I wish I had a hundred brothers who could testify I was at the end of my rope and he strengthened me my chick came back slap somebody high five them and tell them I got it back I'm getting my money back I'm getting my family back I'm getting my joy back I'm getting my peace back I'm getting my focus back I'm getting my anointing back I'm getting my drive back
heaven still running. I didn't preach my whole sermon. And he's still running. Come here, man. Come here, man. Come here. Let me tell you something. This is Kevin Cooper from Dallas, Texas, and 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 he said he said Bishop is one of the one of the young deacons in my church. And, uh, give me. Uh, He's one of the young deacons in my church, and he said, Bishop, he said, I believe God's given me a, a ministry to come and, and train you. He's a trainer. He's a, he's a professional trainer. And, and I told him, I said, you know, I've been working out on my own. <laughs> and, he, and he said, he said, yeah, he said, but I'm, I believe I'm called to train you. And so we've been in a training program. And, and I'm going to tell you something, brothers. Speaking on behalf of somebody who started out at 360 pounds, you know what? It helps when you got a trainer. It does. It helps. It just helps you. Because cause, cause when I would have quit, he said, let's do another set. Sometimes he really gets on my nerves, <laughs> but I love him anyway. And I'm going to tell you something. I said that to make a point. Some of you are trying to live a Christian life, but you don't know Jesus. See, you, you got to have a personal experience with Jesus because every time you get ready to say you can't do it, you know what he does? His word comes along and strengthens you. So, so maybe, 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 come here, Billy. Maybe, I don't know, because I might eat me some pie tonight. I don't know that I will ever look like him. But if I can be the best me that I can be, you know what, I think that's a pretty good deal. But if I won't listen at anybody and I won't let anybody train me, no matter how much desire I have, I'll never be the best me that I can be. Some of you, it's not, I'm not, I'm not really talking about getting in shape. He's he going to do that in the morning. In the morning, meet him. He's going to do that. That's his ministry. It's my ministry to get you spiritually in shape. He's going to work on your body. I want to work, work on your spirit. Let, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. There's not an issue in your life that you can't overcome if you will come to Christ and, and then let Christ begin to operate in your life. Even, even that brother in prison right now, if, if you will come to Christ right there in the prison, the same anointing that's in the Georgia Dome is right there in the prison to touch you, to help you, to deliver you, to set you free. You don't need drugs, you don't need this, you don't need that, you don't need the other. All you need is Jesus and he's able to set you free. If you think that I've been up here for the last 45 minutes or an hour talking about exercise, then you can't hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. He talks about exercise. I'm talking about knowing Jesus and getting him on the inside so that you can overcome the enemy. He's going to build up your body and work on your outside and he's going to work on your spirit too because he's going to show you how to use your faith to affect everything about you. But I want to challenge you tonight. It begins with Jesus Christ. There are a lot of men in this room who need the Lord. Yeah, you've been to church. You listen to gospel music sometime. Sometimes you listen at a sermon. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about knowing Jesus till he becomes an influence in your life so that when life is overwhelming you and you can't lift the weight anymore, the Holy Spirit will come and lift the weight up off of you and there are some of you brothers right now, you let the weight get you down and the weights are on you right now and you've really backslidden, you've really walked away from the Lord but do you not know that if you come to him, he would lift the burden up off of your life and give you the grace to keep on living. 
I want every man in this room to bow your heads and close your eyes. I want the aisles to be open and I want nobody walking in the aisles because no matter who you are, you're not important enough to get in the way of my altar call. I want everybody that's not lame to stand on your feet and everybody that got a head to bow it and everybody who has any respect for God to clear the house so that I can make this altar call. And if you're watching by television, right in that prison, the anointing is coming right in there to touch you and to set you free and to deliver you. I don't care what you did and how horrible it is. Maybe man will never forget. I don't know about your sentence. I don't, I don't know what God's going to do about that, but I know that Jesus will set you free and totally deliver you and give you the grace to deal with whatever life puts on you. And life can sure put some stuff on you, I'm telling you. But God can get it off of you. I kept thinking I was going to meet somebody that would lift it off of me. That I was going to reach some accomplishment that would lift it off of me. That if I got a nice car, it would get it off of me. Or if I got more than one pair of dress shoes, it would get it off of me. You know what? What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Lord, when life is straining everything within me, send your blood to the spot where I hurt the most. Send your blood where the strain is. For somebody the strain is in their marriage and for somebody it's in their finances and somebody it's in their sexuality and somebody it's in their personality, wherever the strain is, Father, send the blood. Send the blood to that brother on the last row in the top of the balcony who thinks nobody's even paying him any attention, but tonight, Lord, send the blood right there. To that Muslim brother that walked away from Christianity because he just seen so much junk and he said, maybe there's nothing to God. Well, well, God may have some issues with some of his children, but let me tell you something, there's nothing wrong with Jesus. Some of his kids act crazy, I'll admit that, but there's nothing wrong with the Lord. And tonight, you need Jesus. Somebody in this room, you had a call on your life. And you walked away from God. Some of you in the prison, you had a call on your life and you just, you've allowed the situation to wait to break you down. But tonight, tonight Jesus cares for you. Oh, how he longs to set you free. You say, oh, but the weight's on me preaching. I'm running and it feels like I'm not getting anywhere. God's working out things in you right now that nobody else could work out but him. You got to submit to the trainer and say, Lord, I'm going to do it your way. I feel like giving up, but I'm going to do it your way. And if you'll forgive me, I'll come right now. While heads are bowed and eyes are closed, I want every brother that needs Jesus, every backslider, every sinner, step in the nearest aisle and give that mess to Jesus. That anger, that confusion, that problem, give it to Jesus. There's a reason you're here. God wants to get you back on the mark get you fixed up so you can go man not fake it not play a game not go through a ritual so you can go jesus said i come that you might have life and have it more abundantly god wants to work a miracle in your life you don't need another dose of something that wasn't working the first time try jesus brothers i want you to come when you come stand because there's so many brothers coming i don't have room for you to kneel but in your heart, you kneel while you stand. I want the brothers in the balcony to come all the way down. You that are up there, come down. You that are watching by television, I want you to come to Jesus Christ right there in your living room, right where you are, to just come and say, Lord, I'm a man and I feel like I'm a strong man, but life is breaking me down. Lord, I need you. I need you. I got a whole lot of things and I, I own a whole lot of stuff, but I can't buy peace and I can't buy joy and I can't find love. I've been hit so many times. Feels like everything's against me. I need Jesus. I need Jesus. My marriage has gone crazy. I need Jesus. I've been aching all my life over my father. I need Jesus. I went through some problems in my life. I need Jesus. I call every backslider and every sinner to this altar. Come down out the balcony. It doesn't matter how far you have to come. He died to set you free. Please, in that prison, please, please do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. The prison might look like a strange gymnasium. It might look like a strange place to get training. 
but I've seen a lot of men come out of prison and turn their life around and do great things and, and pull their life together. And some of them are in this room right now. There are some men in this room that have been there and done that. And if God brought them out, hey man, he can bring you out too. I don't care what the judge said. I'm talking about Jesus. Jesus is greater than any judge and any king. He's king of kings and lord of lords. He'll set you free. Come to Christ right now. We've got ministers there. You've got chaplains there. You've got people who care about you right now. And they're there to minister to you. Come on to Christ. I want to challenge that brother that wants to come and your feet feel like lead and you feel like you can't move your feet. Come on to this altar. Jesus is calling you right now. Yes, sir. He's calling you. Make a move.